When you're watching the news, the headlines, 6.26% retail inflation, it remains high in the month of June. Fuel inflation almost 13%, health at 7.5%, but the um, index of industrial production effectively still 14%, that's below May 2019. The Prime Minister will discuss the COVID situation with Northeast Chief Ministers tomorrow. Currently, 58 districts in India have a positivity rate over 10%, 37 of these in the Northeast. The Indian Medical Association says a third wave is imminent in Hyderabad. 30,000 participate in Bonalu festivities. BJP MPs propose a population control law after Yogi Adityanath pushes a two-kids law. Nitish opposes it. India's great digital divide, students being left behind in the pandemic, those who cannot afford a computer or a smartphone. The monsoon inches forward, but it does elude the national capital region. There is still no date for when the rains will be here. The Yamuna is at its lowest level in over 50 years. Meanwhile, there are water wars between Haryana and Delhi. But in places where it has been raining and there have been thunderstorms, lightning has killed 11 taking selfies. In fact, almost 60 have died in lightning strikes in UP and Rajasthan. A flash flood, meanwhile, near Dharamshala in Himachal Pradesh. The Walmart-owned Flipkart has ushered back Japan's SoftBank as an investor in a $3.6 billion funding round. Well, the bad news, the uh, retail inflation rate remains high in the month of June. It's at 6.26%. Remember, the Reserve Bank of India was targeting less than 6%, but at 6.26%, particularly at a time when there is so much distress as a result of COVID and the economy being in the state it is, this isn't good news at all. It remains high. It has dipped just 0.04%, nowhere close to where one wants it to dip. Urban inflation, meanwhile, has risen almost 0.5 to 6.4%. Fuel inflation is almost at 13%. Health at approximately 8%. Food inflation at 5.6%. Now, a couple of weeks back, the numbers on fuel inflation had been present. They were very high. But food inflation hadn't, in fact, been rising. But there was always a sense that there could be some sort of a cascading impact. And the question that needs to be asked is, is that the case at this stage? Those hit most by inflation are the middle class, many struggling to find their feet at this time of COVID. Dev Prakash Mishra had many customers before the pandemic. Now most are working from home. And with prices of edible oil, cooking gas and other commodities rising, he has had to increase his prices by 10 rupees. Hey guys, what was in the Anil Fulawali sells tea in Mumbai's lower Paril area and with prices of milk, sugar, cooking gas are up, he is losing a thousand rupees a week. Not just small businessmen, even householders are worrying about their budget. At a time when people have either lost their jobs or salaries have not gone up for a long time. Sherwani Chavan lives in a one-room house in a chawl in Mumbai's Tunabati area. She has two children and her bills are becoming impossible to pay. For June, the retail inflation touched 6.26%, well above RBI's comfort level of 4%, plus or minus 2%. This was mainly because of rising fuel and edible oil prices along with pulses. On July 7th, petrol prices touched 100 rupees a litre in all four metros. Year-on-year -year inflation rate in June for edible oil was 34.78%. Inflation has been the pain point in the last few months. Rising prices of fuel and commodity have clearly pinched the common man and it is time government needs to listen to these cries 
and provide some relief to the common man who already have been suffering due to the pandemic. In Mumbai with camera person Rajendra Dhyalkar, this is Puva Kitness for NDTV. Meanwhile, the um, index of industrial production in the country is up 29.3% in May. But while that might actually look or sound very good, it has as a result of a low base effect. Um, in fact, it's minus 33.4% in May 2020. This is where it was. So the growth is 29.3% up compared to where it was. So where you, what you really do need to look is where was it? in 2019. Effectively, this year's index of industrial production is still 14 percent below May 2019 levels. And no good news as far as vaccinations are concerned. Vaccinations have now fallen below the pre-June 21st level. 32.7 lakh uh, average number of doses per day today versus 33.7 lakh was the average on the 20th of June. These numbers as of 7 p.m. today Remember, we need to be vaccinating close to one crore people a day. At numbers at 38.6 lakh a day, uh, India is well short of meeting that target of vaccinating two, uh, two doses for all adults by the end of December. That seems almost impossible. The Prime Minister will discuss, meanwhile, the COVID situation with Northeast Chief Ministers tomorrow. Currently, 58 districts in India have a positivity rate over 10%. 37 of these districts are in the northeast. The Indian Medical Association says a third wave is imminent. In Hyderabad, about 30,000 people participated in Bonalu festivities. Uh, among those unmasked were ministers. The COVID crisis in the northeast is worrying. Two thirds of the country's 58 districts with over 10% positivity rate are here. Tomorrow, the Prime Minister will meet all the Chief Ministers of the region. But signs of negligence seen elsewhere. About 30,000 people participated in the Bonalu festivities in Hyderabad. Among those unmasked were ministers. The ministers themselves can be seen without masks. There is no social distancing. And uh, ironically, the Hyderabad Police Commissioner also in fact sharing the dice uh, in the event. And he's the only one in fact who's seen wearing the mask. Ironically, this festival had started as a thanksgiving to the goddess for stopping the plague in Hyderabad and Sikandrabad during the 19th century. But now, despite the COVID pandemic, no social distancing rules were followed here. Another festival, the Puri Jagannath Rath Yatra in Odisha, also began today for the second consecutive year without pilgrims. Yet, there were crowds and few COVID precautions in sight. Such scenes and the fears of Kaveri Yatra to Haridwar being allowed compelled India's top doctor's body, the Indian Medical Association, to urge state governments to stop mass gatherings in light of an imminent third wave. We appeal to the government and appeal to all the public, let us not take any chance and let up our guard and do any mass gathering in any name of whether tourist part visit, pilgrimage visit or the, the rituals of the uh, religious rituals. The lax behavior is worrisome because despite the decline in India's cases, India's R factor, which reflects the speed at which the infections are spreading, has been increasing. India's R factor has increased from 0.87 a week ago to 0.95 today. Overall, if we see the situation, R0 or the country has gone from 0.87 to 0.95. That means we need to be worried about in terms of, you know, the gains which we had gained so far in terms of number of cases coming down. We need to see where we are at fault. That means whether we have opened up in a hurry, whether the people's behavior is irresponsible. So far, only 8% of India's population has been fully vaccinated. And in such a scenario where majority of our population is still vulnerable to the infection, both the public as well as the government will have to take every possible precaution to ensure that fears of a third wave do not turn into reality. With Thomas Sudhir in Hyderabad and camera person Mursalin Mohammed in New Delhi, this is Sukirti Dwedi for NDTV. As BJP ruled states like UP and Assam push laws to control population, the Prime Minister's Bihar ally Nitish Kumar has once again publicly voiced a strong disagreement. States can do whatever they want, Mr. Kumar said. I clearly believe that it's not possible to ensure population control with a law. 
testing political waters, diverting political attention or addressing a legitimate problem. The reactions to Uttar Pradesh government's population control law draft six months ahead of the state assembly elections have been plenty. It all started on Sunday when UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath announced the need for a law. According to the draft of the proposed population control bill, anyone violating two-child policy in Uttar Pradesh will be debarred from contesting local body elections. They will be debarred from applying for or getting promotion in government jobs and receiving any kind of government subsidy. Public servants who adopt the two-child norm will get two additional increments during the entire service. 3% increase will also be there in the Employers' Contribution Fund under National Pension Scheme. The proposed law drew criticism from ally Nitish Kumar as well, who said that such laws do not work. The Congress's Salman Khurshid took the criticism a step further. In New Delhi, in what appeared to be a synchronized strategy, many BJP MPs said that they will introduce a private member's bill in the upcoming Lok Sabha session. These MPs include Rakesh Sinha and Anil Agarwal. Opposition parties have hit up against the government. जो पॉलिटिकल माइलेज लेने की भूख है वो इस कदर है कि ये कहते कुछ और करते कुछ है साहब ये तो सिर्फ फिर मैं आपको कह रहा हूं जो शब्द आपने कहा है कि 2022 का सगुफा है ये टोटल सगुफा है विद अ चैलेंजिंग यूपी इलेक्शन 6 मंथ्स अवे एंड योगी आदित्यनाथ हैंडलिंग ऑफ द कोविड क्राइसिस अमिड द डीप फैक्शन वॉर्स ऑफ द बीजेपी द ऑपोजिशन लुक्स एट दिस लॉ मोर एज अ नैरेटिव कंट्रोल मेजर इंस्टेड ऑफ अ पॉपुलेशन कंट्रोल वन द क्वेश्चन नाउ इज whether a law is the best way to handle population related issues bureau report ndtv after two terrorists allegedly linked with al qaeda were arrested from the kakori area of lucknow the former uttar pradesh chief minister and samajwadi party president akhilesh yadav has said that he doesn't trust the action of the police and of the bjp government in the state his remarks came after the uttar pradesh anti terror squad arrested two allegedly al qaeda terrorists from the outskirts of lucknow on sunday the agency believes they were planning explosions including using human bombs at several places in uttar pradesh hum is sima mein lang gaye hain unki bhi suchi bani hui hai main uttar pradesh ki police par aur khas kar bjp ki sarkar bharosa nahi kar sakta meanwhile the bsp chief mayawati is tweeted she says the type of action creates doubts in the minds of people only when the general elections to up assembly are approaching if there's truth behind the action then why was the police oblivious for so long this is the question people are asking therefore the government should not take any such action which will increase unrest among the public the monsoon session of parliament begins on the 19th of this month so how many of our mps have been vaccinated well 311 of them have been fully vaccinated 130 mps have had one dose 23 haven't been vaccinated they'll have to take the mandatory rt pcr test before they go in seating arrangements will follow social distancing norms visitors gallery is also being used to seat mps so there won't be visitors per se just to space out people well another day went by without monsoon rains in delhi in fact there's been little progress in the monsoon in uh, the north it's almost stationary it's indeed been a long wait for the monsoon while the normal date is the 27th of june it's been predicted that the monsoon will arrive in delhi even earlier it was thought that it would come on the 15th of june it's now the se- it's now the 12th of july it's still not here the monsoon forecast has been off the mark yet again the monsoon is now over the foothills of punjab and haryana there could be light rain in a day or two in delhi it could actually pick up some activity around the 17th don't blame us if we got it wrong we haven't the med department may have so no heat wave in delhi and adjoining areas at the moment that's some good news small respite there heavy rainfall however in parts of gujarat rajasthan last night heavy showers in jaipur in rajasthan last night as well
दिल्ली में गड़बड़ नहीं है दिल्ली में अभी हम लोग फर्दर स्टडी करेंगे कि इतना कंडीशन होने के बाद रेन क्यों लार्ज स्केल में रियलाइज नहीं हुआ तो विंड और टेम्परेचर तो डाउन है तो साइंटिफिकली तो मानसून का ऐसे ही जाता है कंडीशन हमारा लेकिन रेन प्राइम क्राइस डेट मतलब डेट हाँ कभी भी हो सकता है डेट मतलब क्या है अगर होना है तो यही मॉनिटरिंग टाइम में होगा जो मॉनिटरिंग हम रखें The Delhi government has moved the Supreme Court seeking contempt action against the Haryana government for stalling what they say is Delhi's rightful portion of water from canals which flow into the city from Haryana. In its plea, the Delhi government has said that Haryana is stalling uh, the rights of uh, Delhiites uh, and that this was a willful contempt of court and an order of the Supreme Court of India. The Delhi government wants contempt proceedings initiated against the Chief Secretary of Haryana and the additional Chief Secretary. Uh, for willful disobedience, the top court had directed the water level at the Wazirabad Reservoir be kept full to its capacity in order to meet the drinking water needs of the national uh, capital region. But as you can see over there, it's entirely dried up. The Jamuna in uh, one of its lowest levels in decades. You see, काले रंग से बनाए गए एक स्केल हमने यहाँ लगाया हुआ है हाँ। जो 674 तक कम से कम होना चाहिए जो बीच में आप बड़ी सी लाइन देख रहे हैं हाँ हाँ हाँ। कम से कम इतना यानी कि इतनी गिरावट यमुना नदी के स्तर में आई है एक फुट पानी भी अगर कम होता है इस मेजरिंग स्केल पे तो दिल्ली में त्राहीमाम हो जाता है वेल देर वॉज नो मानसून रेन इन डेली क्वाइट क्लियरली बट डेवेस्टेशन एल्स मेंज नियर धर्मशाला देर वो फ्लैश फ्लॉज विद पीपल इंक्लूडिंग चिल्ड्रेन being swept away A flash flood near Meklot Ganj Dharamshala this morning A 9 year old girl is among several people missing in Himachal Pradesh's Kangra district Social media ke upar kafi bhrantiyan aur stories chal rahi hain ke cloud burst hua ya flash flood aa gaye ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं हुआ है क्योंकि रात भर से बहुत भारी बारिश हो रही थी तो एक नाला है जो ब्लॉक हो गया और उसने अपना कोर्स चेंज कर लिया और पठानकोट मनाली हाईवे जो है वो अवरुद्ध है यहाँ पर जो मान जी खाद में इतना फ्लड आया के साथ गई सर्ज इन टूरिस्ट नंबर मीन मो पीपल आर एट रिस्क टूडे द चीफ मिनिस्टर अपील टू टूरिस्ट टू स्टे अवे फ्रॉम रिवर्स हैवी टू वेरी हैवी रेनफॉल इज फोरकास्ट फॉर टूडे एंड टूमोरो with Mohammad Ghazali Joshua Chin for NDTV Elsewhere in North India there have been deadly lightning strikes nearly 60 have been killed in lightning strikes in Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan children are among those who've died um, 11 people in fact were taking selfies uh, at, and they've died at the Amer Fort in Rajasthan as the light, as lightning struck four children died in Kota three children died in Dholpur in Rajasthan The Walmart-owned online retailer Flipkart has ushered back Japan's SoftBank as an investor in a 3.6 billion dollar uh, funding round that translates to 26,830 odd crores. Now the e-commerce firm will be valued at 37.6 billion or um, 2,80,260 crores. The fundraise comes amidst Flipkart exploring various moves. They're trying to go public in the US. The goal is to up their valuation. to approximately 50 billion dollars the latest funding was led by in uh, investors the canada pension plan investment board gic um softbank also walmart the bengaluru based company which rivals uh, amazon and india's reliance industries is looking to up its market share well social distance has saved lives in the pandemic but the digital distance the virus spawned is proving deadly for children who were going to school before the pandemic but are now getting forced out of the system in many cases before the digital divide it's very simple really if you can afford an online education with a smartphone or a laptop you are lucky there are innumerable children in our country who are left out mondi babanji went to um, a village 50 kilometers from kolkata where a 50 year old government recognized madrasa that served the village over generations has become from a thriving center of learning to a graveyard of learning
three best friends, all in class 6, racing to finish arithmetic homework that just popped up on Jasimuddin's father's phone. A pandemic hit small time rice trader, Sirajul can still afford the device and data and encourages his son to share the phone and homework with the girls. He knows Tamanna's father is jobless and Zulaika's father, a driver, is often away, has a phone, but it is not smart. আমার বন্ধুর বাড়ি এসেছি একটু এই স্যারেরা কি কি পাঠিয়েছে সেগুলো দেখার জন্য দেখে আমি এবার আলাদা করে খাতায় লিখে আমি আবার ওট ফোন থেকে এই স্যারেদের কাছে নাম বলে পাঠিয়ে দিই এই গ্রামের কথা বলছি যদি দুশো ছেলে মেয়ে স্কুলে যায় তাদের মধ্যে হয়তো পঞ্চাশটা ছেলে মেয়ের মোবাইল বা ল্যাপটপ আছে তা বাকি যে দেড়শো ছেলে মেয়ে তারা তো পিছিয়ে মানে মানে সে পেছনে ওরা শেষ নাই the Bengal government's latest data on the digital divide in the state is not available. But a widely quoted study done by child rights groups last year found barely 30% of Bengal's 15 million school enrolled students had access to online classes. Noor Afsana of class 10 is part of the vast 70% with no access to a device. Her widowed mother keeps a shop of odds and ends that barely keeps their bellies full. The phone is not in private, but the phone is not in private. The phone is not in private, but the phone is not in private. The phone is not in private. It is a very good thing. I am not in school. 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 But is a smartphone a real bridge over the troubled digital waters? Tawfiq who got a 10,000 rupee smartphone under a government scheme for class 12 students, doesn't think so. What do you have to do? You have to do class in the online class. You have to do it? Yes. You have to do it. 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 What do you have to do? What do you have to do? What do you have to do? Siddhi Shankar, Monadipa Banerjee, NDTV.